my name is Alan, and I'm going to be doing the oxygen uh, check off here at Lawrence Donaldson Technical College. I've already received a requisition to place a patient on a 40% uh, tray collar, aerosol tray collar, and I was given that the patient's uh, tidal volume and respiratory rate were already something that the instructor let me know, and I was able to use those two pieces of information to find out that I needed to set up a double high flow aerosol nebulizer setup. Uh, the first thing I would do from with that requisition is I would go to the patient's chart. I would check the patient's chart for a valid physician's order. After I found a valid physician's order for the oxygen uh, that's been ordered, I would look in the chart for uh, an indication as to why that patient was going on that oxygen. Uh, I would look at any other pertinent information in the chart, ABG, CBCs, maybe chest x-ray, nurse's notes, progress notes. I would also make sure that I got a patient sticker or uh, the information necessary for me to identify the patient, properly identify the patient when I go inside the room. And that would be the medical record number, the patient identification number, or date of birth and name. After I've gained all that, gathered all that together, I would gather my equipment, in which I needed to get two large volume aerosol nebulizers, two flow meters with a Y connector, in which I'm gonna put both flow meters connecting to that quick connect Y in the wall. I needed to have a pulse oximeter, I needed some corrugated tubing, I needed my trach collar mask, I needed a water trap, and I needed an O2 analyzer. Um, <clears throat> I'd also need to have two lengths, each of these are 50 cc's of corrugated tubing. I need two lengths and a T-bar because I'm going to connect both of these large volume nebulizers together. This would be all in a bag, it would not be on the table, it would be aseptic clean as possible. After I've gathered all my equipment, I would proceed to the patient's room and I would start at it like this. Hello, my name is Alan. I'm from Respiratory Care. I'm here to put you on some oxygen. The doctor thought it might help you breathe a little bit better. At that point, I'd go wash my hands or I'd use the alcohol-based rub and wash my hands with that and let it air dry. At that point, I'd proceed to the patient's bed and the first thing I would do is I need to check your patient ID. And I look at his ID compared to what I have already know about the patient, their medical record number, date of birth, and name. Uh, if they're able to speak, I might ask him that information, but I do have the proper patient. At this point, I would explain to the patient that uh, I'll be placing you on some oxygen. Have you ever been on oxygen before? And uh, if you have not been on oxygen before, I have to tell you some precautions. First off, uh, you need to make sure that when you're using oxygen that you don't smoke or anybody in the room smokes. You need to not use electronic devices and uh, I would ask you if you're going to use any kind of hand lotions or facial lotions, you get them approved by the nurse first. If at any time while you're wearing the oxygen you start feeling lightheaded, dizzy, nauseous, uh, I need you to let the nurse know and uh, they'll let me know and I'll come back and we'll check on you. Do you understand that? I'm looking for a response back from the patient to confirm that they understand what I've said. If there was a family member in the room, I would have confirmed with the patient to make sure that it was okay for them to stay there. And if it was, I would make sure that the family understood what I was saying and asked them if they had any questions. If nobody had any questions at this point, I would go ahead and set up the equipment. set up the equipment, but you cannot put it on the patient until you've done your patient assessment. The patient assessment is going to consist of checking the patient's heart rate, respiratory rate, sat color, and level of dyspnea. I need to get that pre-information before placing the patient on oxygen. dial both my nebulizers to 40 percent because that was what the physician has ordered. At that point I would go ahead and hook up all my corrugated tubing trying to maintain aseptic technique. Keep the tubing as clean, uh, clean as possible. I hook up my corrugated tubing 
and I'd have my O2 analyzer prepared and ready to analyze the gas. We don't want to delay um, putting the oxygen on the patient as much as possible, but for demonstration purposes, uh, I'm showing you that there are some times it's best to analyze closest to the patient, and that would be right here. Other times, if you're going to leave it in line, the O2 analyzer, it's best to leave it up here with the probe facing straight down, okay? If you have the probe this way, what will end up happening is condensation will go downward with gravity and go on top of the membrane that's actually doing the analyzing of the gas. But I've analyzed my gas and it's 40%. And at this point, my gas is running. I have both flow meters at 10 liters per minute. I am going to go ahead and get my trade collar and I'll be prepared to place this on the patient. Like I said, before you put the oxygen on the patient, you need to make sure that you've checked the patient's heart rate, respiratory rate, sac color, and level of dyspnea. I would check the patient's heart rate. I'd come around, get their radial. This patient only has one arm. I'd check their radial pulse. I'd look at my watch, and I would count it for at least 15 seconds. After I've done that, I would check the patient's respirations by looking at their chest or placing my hand on the shoulder or towards their back to feel their chest rise. Or I could use my stethoscope and listen to the breath movements in and out. I would look at the patient, take the patient saturation by taking the O2 pulse oximeter probe, placing it on the patient's finger, and getting a saturation check prior to the oxygen. And then I would uh, talk to the patient, ask them about their level of dyspnea, shortness of breath. Uh, you know, how short of breath are you? From a scale of one to five, five being the worst, how would you feel? If the patient was able to respond, they would tell me something and I would have a level of dyspnea to go with. Color, I'm going to look at the patient's lips, their, pa their face, their nail beds, and kind of see if they have any kind of cyanosis. At that point, after doing the patient assessment, I have my oxygen on, which I would never delay. I would get it on the patient as quickly as possible, even if I only had one bottle set up. I set it up with one bottle. And then as I was preparing to set up the second bottle, at least the patient was on some oxygen in the meantime. But since I already calculated everything and I knew that this patient needed to be on at least two bottles, which was 20 liters per minute, so I could have plenty of flow, I was able to do that up front. At this point, I would check the patient's saturation again. I'd take the pulse oximeter, I'd put it on the patient's finger, and do a post-saturation check. Saturation is good. And now what I would do is reiterate to the patient that, uh, please, if you start feeling lightheaded or dizzy or anything like that, I need you to make sure you tell the nurse, they'll get me, and I'll come back and I'll check on you again. Uh, again, please, no smoking, nobody in the room can smoke, electronic devices, no electronic devices, and if you are going to use any kind of hand lotions or facial lotions, make sure you check with the nurse first. Do you, do you, do you understand? Okay, do you understand, ma'am? Yes? Okay, great. Well, I'll be back to check on you, uh, just probably sometime in the next four to eight hours. Uh, if you have any questions or you need anything, let the nurse know and I'll come back. Okay? Thank you very much and you have a great day. At that point, I'd wash my hands. As I'm leaving the room, I'd make sure that I had a no smoking or oxygen and use sign on the door, and then I would go chart on the patient, in the patient's chart.